And that's what he do. And you've Real never done that. You've, you've never criticised them, I must say, have you? No, because I've no right to criticise anybody for telling them how to pick their team and how to play. I do the job I'm paid to do, and that's to look after Liverpool Football Club. I play to our strengths and everything, and obviously Bobby and whoever other, other team uh, manager will play to their strengths. That's their right. It's up to us to be able to overcome it and go on and beat it. If we can't do that, and they're better than us in the day, well, they'll deserve to win. You can't even be, have your last training session on your ground, I gather. Well, uh, we decided to uh, put a tent on there instead of the... Uh, let the lads trade on there. We've got a marquee, though. We're holding the uh, after-game banquet on the pitch, and uh, it's a decision the players made, and they're very happily to agree to go ahead with it, and uh, hopefully this... So no fancy hotels, no, a marquee on the well, pitch? Well, we might go to a hotel. There'll be a marquee on the pitch. We're going to get it down, though, for Alan Cork's testimonial on Monday the 16th. Because of, uh, if anybody deserves credit, it's got to be Alan Cork and Dave Besson, who have seen everything from the fourth division now right through to the final which is a magnificent achievement Terrific. i think that's absolutely right and i think if i can finish with kenny you're right about alan court and you've got a testimonial too for alan hansen, alan hansen and yeah. nobody has been a more distinguished servant of liverpool i would have thought than alan liverpool scotland in the service he's given the game and the enjoyment he's given to the game as well when we won the double in 86 the fact that i was player manager i think he didn't receive the recognition that he deserved but certainly within the club and in the privacy of the club uh, he'd be afraid of every accolade that he possibly could. And he's looking forward to the game. And he's got Ian Rush coming by, I think, hopefully to play for Liverpool, if he can get a game. And uh, <laughs> it's just a good crowd there. Bobby Robson will get a useful, useful run out with some of his lads as well. Ken, Bob, Ray, Laurie and Steve, thank you very much indeed for being with me today. Thank you. All very relaxed uh, yesterday, and thanks you to, to Brian Moore, who will be providing uh, unrivaled match commentary from 3 o'clock. Well, of course, it's another North-South final, a much more uh, expensive day out for the Liverpool fans, those who are supposed to have bugger-all money, uh, as opposed to uh, loads of it uh, that the Londoners uh, are purported to have. Uh, sorry about the language, but that's what our next guest asked me to say. Thinking of going to Wembley today? Well, you better come and see me, ain't you? Cos I got loads of tickets! I gone down Wimbledon last week and bought up all their share, didn't I? 30 quid each, I'm selling them for 200. I'm going to make loads of money. <laughs> you know, football's good, isn't it, right? And the best thing about it is all them expensive players, you know, like Clive Allen, right? He cost loads of money before, right? And now he's been sold, according to the papers, to what's it called? Oué la plume de Matante United in France or something. No, he ain't, cos I bought him, ain't I? He's my houseboy now. Come on, Clive, do my shoes. No, no, no. Can I go and play football now, loads? No, you can't. I need my nails manicured. I think I'll buy that Paul Gas guy now. Bring him down to Newcastle, teach him how to speak English properly. We are the man. Shut your face, Paul. Hurry up! <laughs> Harry Enfield and Clive, loads of goals. Uh, Alan, and uh, thanks to them for that. Now, look, uh, Ian St John has uh, joined us now. A good journey, was it, from the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> we, we came in a car from the conference centre, from the Champagne Bar there, and with Frank Bruno in the front seat, Sergio Lawless, Greaves and I in the back, well, we're coming through the crowds, and I don't think there's any roof left in the car, you know, they were banging on it. But Big Frank is, is so popular, you know, it was all fun. And, uh, but they're banging on the car, and it was quite terrifying, actually. But I'm delighted to be here, although it's a bit warmer here than it is over in the It is warm, that's why we've yeah. uh, changed the shirt sleeve order, uh, by the way. Now, everyone's had their say about the game. Uh, in, yes. in the, you've had yours, yes. the press this morning. They're saying that it's, it's the game that, uh, where football needs to triumph and that uh, Liverpool should win. Well, I, I must say, I go along with that thinking because I, I, I'm a traditionalist. I like the game to be played on the ground and, and played in, in nice patterns. And I, I think it has poetry in motion when the game's played right. And the Brazilians have always done that, and Liverpool, this present team, are certainly doing Who that. are arriving, by the way, at the moment, Saint. Uh, there they are. That's the view from the Liverpool coach, Ian. Yeah, well, this, this team have been fantastic. And they're arriving here at Wembley today, really, at the end of a season where it's been unrivaled, I think, in, in entertainment value. And everybody on Merseyside and everybody around the country that have witnessed Liverpool this year have certainly had their money's worth and, and they've all been thrilled by them because they, they have added a little extra dimension this year, I thought. Yes. Well, I think what we can, uh, we can do now, Ian, is actually go on board the coach uh, with our reporter, Martin Tyler. 
Well, I think the most talked about forehead in football, Gary Gillespie, how many stitches are there under that plaster? The six concealed under the plaster, no. And are you fit to play if selected? Uh, yes, I will be, yes. How much uh, of a test have you done heading the ball? Well, I've trained the last two days and uh, I've done a bit of heading with Roy Evans and Ronnie Moran, so uh, hopefully it will stand the test. Will you play with a headband? Uh, I think that will be the case, yes. And against John Fashionu, of all people, I suppose it couldn't be worse, really, somebody who's a physical type of striker. Well, as long as I head the ball and not his head, I should be OK. <clears throat> How did it happen? It was just a clash with Nigel. Uh, the ball kind of bounced in between the two of us, and uh, the two of us went for the same ball. I ended up heading the ball, and Nigel ended up heading me. And, of course, this is very much deja vu for you, because two years ago we were talking, you had a stomach upset on that day. Yeah, I think that's when you got called a Russian spy, Martin, I can remember it. <laughs> uh, obviously, it was a big disappointment missing the cup final two years ago. Hopefully, it won't be the same case this year. So you're confident that you will be playing? Mm, fingers crossed, yes. Cheers, Gary. Well, let's go up and uh, find the other partner in crime, really, Nigel Spackman. Right, Nigel, another man uh, plastered, if we might say so. <laughs> How are you? Gary says uh, that he's got a good chance, if selected, of course. How many stitches have you got under there? Six. And are you available for selection, shall we say? Available for selection. <laughs> but, uh, it's obviously down to the manager and the doctor. What sort of uh, practice have you done heading the ball this week? Uh, none. Really, just yesterday, just uh, headed a couple of balls yesterday in, in, in the hotel. Alan Hansen, are you a little bit concerned that a couple of players around you who've got to deal with some aerial bombardment might uh, have a problem heading the ball today? Mr. Talk, Martin, to be honest with you. <laughs> You've been through it before so often, surely not. Um, well, it's, it's great to be back here, but um, tell you, tell you, quarter to five, how I feel. How does it feel to be such strong favourites? Well, the pressure's all on us, isn't it? We've got to go and win, 4-1 on. Um, if I was a betting man, I wouldn't even have a go at that price. But um, certainly if we play to a potential, then we've got a chance. It does look very warm out there. Is that something that's causing a bit of concern amongst the players? Well, we'll try to find a woman to support her along the way, but <laughs> can't, can't seem to see any. That's causing us concern for the kickoff. But you played at Wembley often before. <laughs> Is it something that makes it difficult to get your breath on a day like this, a May day where the sun's shining so brightly? Yeah, obviously it's going to be very warm. Um, it's going to take out on the players a big pitch, a stamina satin pitch. Um, I think there'll be a lot of mistakes made in the second half. Hopefully it won't be us making them. we better mention the testimonial. Oh yeah, well of course yeah. <laughs> the lads were saying I should have had a big banner there. It's in my testimonials Monday night. but. Um, Good plug, boys. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Yeah. You've got a banner here for almost everything else. Yeah. I don't know how you've missed out there. OK, well, from the bus for the moment, let's go back inside Wembley. Thanks very much indeed, Martin. Looks like uh, Gillespie there and Spackman have just had a battle with Wimbledon, not, uh, not looking forward to one. Now, Wimbledon have already arrived. Uh, their coach pulled into the, uh, the tunnel about uh, five minutes ago. Bobby Gould uh, was one of the first players off the, off the bus. Dave Besson was there as well with his little son. And there's Bobby. <laughs> oh, he's crying. Saint, he's, uh, he's a bit of too much for the young lad there, isn't it? I, I thought it was nice this morning when, when we were showing some training shots of Wimbledon, and the little fellow was there in among the players when they were warming up, and he's doing his exercises along with him. I think it's great when football clubs allow the kids into the grounds, you know, to the dressing room areas. And, and we were like that. Bill Shankly always allowed our kids in. Yeah. And, you know, on Sunday mornings, you take the kids down. Uh, when lads are in for a bath or a bit of treatment. And I think that's a nice thing about football clubs. You know, if they can make it a family atmosphere, then that's when you, you gel this togetherness. And I think Wimbledon have got that. That's very much a Wimbledon trait. You know, this family atmosphere and we're all pulled for each other. That's right. And nice for the young lad as well. I remember the Milk Cup final a few years ago when Mike Shannon brought his lads, said he wanted to uh, experience right. the full day. Anyway, more from Wembley shortly. We're going to take a short break. To make the presentation, Bobby Robson, and here's Jim Rosenthal. Elton, thank you very much indeed. Bobby Robson has made his way down to the cauldron of pitch side to make the presentation to Nigel Clough. Bobby, first of all, before you before you hand that over, that uh, very heavy trophy, I'd just like a little assessment from you as England manager of Nigel's skills. Well, he's a marvellous little player. 
I mean, he's a great receiver of the ball, knows how to control it, knows how to turn with it. He sees everything in front of him, sees all the good runs that other players make. He's got this marvellous uh, manner of bringing other people into the play. He's a nice little goal scorer, very courageous in the box, can take half a chance. 23 goals, I think, this season. Uh, played in the first division. That's very uh, meritorious, I think. I think just one more question for you, Bobby. People are going to be wondering, uh, when are you going to give him the I, first cap? I had a feeling you were going to ask me that. <laughs> well, he's just got to keep going. Uh, he's very young, but he's done very well. Sometime in the near future, we've got the European Championships. After that, it's the World Cup. Right. And there's a good chance that in the next two years, uh, prior to the World Cup, we ought to have a look at Nigel in the, in, in the senior team. OK, he's the first young eagle. I'd just like you to hand the trophy over, Bobby. Thank you very much indeed. My for pleasure, Nigel. Many congratulations and thoroughly deserved, I must say. Good. Now, Nigel, a little bit of history here because uh, your first television interview, uh, I believe. Is, yeah. Now, I mean, why, why is that? Why, why, have, why have you kept away from nice, friendly people like us? Well, I think it's better. I think there's enough in the family with one person going on television and I try to keep my head down and just get on with what I'm paid to do, play football. Mm -hmm. How much a, of a problem is it working for your old dad? Oh, it's not so much of a problem now, everybody's used to it uh, and hopefully I've established myself so it's not a problem now. I mean, you don't leave the house saying, goodness me, thank goodness I've got rid of him and then say, oh, I can see him again at work, do you? No, no, it's not like that, no. As I say, now we've, uh, it's mainly other people getting used to it that was the problem, yes. not particularly us. I think your dad's a bit surprised by the amount of goals you've scored this season. Has it surprised you as well? It has. I've ended up with 20 league goals and I thought I'd struggle to get them if I played all the games and I've missed a few as well. Yeah. So it's been a nice surprise. Good, smashing. And what about uh, down here on the pitch at Wembley? I mean, it's roasting hot, but I think you must be a bit sad you're not playing. Yes, that's, uh, I think, the major regret of the season. I think we could have been here. Uh, we thought we had a chance in the semi-final, but I think Liverpool just about deserved it. Yes, right. Uh, was there any one thing that your, your dad ever said to you that uh, has kept you going through possibly some of the difficult, the harder times in football? Any one message he drummed into your ear? No, there's too many messages. <laughs> too many. <laughs> ear bashing, eh? Yes. Not Great. to mention here either. Great. Matthew, just one <laughs> final thing we must do is to call in uh, Owen Rout the uh, executive director of Barclays. You've got another little gift for him, haven't you? I have indeed, a Barclays share portfolio, and I hope it'll grow as his career will. There we well, go, Owen. Thank you very much indeed. That's a £5,000 portfolio. I'm delighted to say it's a sponsorship that will be continuing next season. Nigel, well done. Thanks, Jim, and well done to, to Nigel Clough. Surprising, really, his first television interview, his maiden TV interview, didn't he handle it well? Uh, his old man, of course, uh, he's well used to this sort of thing, and I think he can uh, hear me at the moment in the celebrity yeah, bar. Brian? Good you afternoon to you. Good. good afternoon to you, young man. I think you must be uh, very proud of your young man, mustn't you, today? Thank you very much, I am. I'm delighted for him. He's had a good season. Are you, are you more proud as a, a father, Brian, or, or as his manager? Uh, it's a bit of both, obviously. You can't distinguish between the two. Uh, I just like being surrounded with good players and by good players. If, you, it... if you could play, you could work for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. So now, I, I know, uh, you know you wanted to be here with your Nottingham Forest team to play uh, in the FA Cup final. It's been a, a long-time ambition for you, but there must be some consolation that Nigel's got this very prestigious award. Well, the club's very happy for him. He's obviously full of himself because I don't think he really thought he was going to win it. So um, it's an honour for the club, an honour for him, and I'm delighted as his dad. And uh, just a final word, uh, you must have been encouraged too to hear Bobby Robson say that within uh, the foreseeable future he'll be getting a, an international cap like his dad. Well, I'm not sure if Bobby said that, but if he does he uh, and it comes along, then everybody will be pleased. He's worked extremely hard in the last four years to get where he is, and uh, he's done it with a reasonable amount of style. But it's the, it's the first interview he's done on television, and it'll be the last one that I'm following him. <laughs> Well, it's been uh, unique. Brian, thank you, very much for, <laughs> thank you very much for that, Brian. It's and a pleasure. enjoy the match this afternoon. I will do. Uh, a good day for the Clough clan. You be careful. I will be. Brian Clough and before that, uh, young Nigel, the Barclays Young Eagle of the Year. And now we're going to take another break. Here at Wembley, uh, up here in the studio, it must be uh, something between 90 and 100 degrees. Uh, I wonder what it is down on the pitch. Let's rejoin Jim. Elton, you're all right up there with all that uh, air conditioning. I've been down here behind the goal a few times and I've never known it hotter. You could fry an egg down here. We've managed to, to get a hold of the older thermometer and it's gone off the meter. It's up over 80 
degrees down here, 80 to 85 degrees, and I would have to say it's not getting any cooler. It's going to be hot work down here. Back to you in the studio. I mean, this, uh, this really is going to be one of the, the critical things of the day, Ian, isn't it? Yeah. This heat. It's going to be a factor, isn't it? You know, that, um, I think Liverpool's style obviously would suit the conditions more than Wimbledon's style. You know, they get it and they're, they're more composed and knock the ball around it and save energy by making sure they don't charge up into positions where they play the ball around and they can amble into it, you know? It must, uh, be, it must be terrible in the second half, uh, you know, last 20 minutes. Yeah. The only thing I was saying to you, Greavesy, before, that Wimbledon are a very fit side. I mean, I saw them on Monday night up at uh, Manchester, and they do play, really go at it, you know, and uh, they are a fit side, but I think this will test them today. And their style is not, I wouldn't think, suited to it. <laughs> but at the same time, we're all looking forward to the clash, you know, of styles. You know, they knock up, charge in their style of Wimbledon, and Liverpool's silky play around stuff. I would, at this, you'd say, well, Liverpool style should be suited to the occasion, but we will see. Mora was saying earlier, that's Bobby Moore, of course, that uh, you know that it was known in the World Cup when, when the temperatures were similar to this. Yes, it, it's, well, you're right. You know, no hotter there. That's and the right. players are losing something like 12 pounds throughout the course of a game. Yeah. I yeah. mean, that must be damaging, wasn't it? Well, well, it's, I mean, you, you shouldn't put it back once you, once you have a, a few drinks after it. But uh, the, the calibre game, you know, the showbiz game, they're only going to play eight minutes. And I mean, Tarbuck, he'll never last 16 minutes out here out here today. But a good thing will be he could maybe lose a stone. I was so going to say, Jimmy's happen. been calling in the Michelin man recently. <laughs> it could work to Tarby's advantage. This well, this could be to his advantage, you know. I mean, I mean, I don't know if the jazz will fit him when he goes out, but it'll fit him when he comes back up again, that's for sure. Yeah. I think we just have a little look round Wembley, uh, Ian, and see the way that it is filling up at the moment. Uh, there's been a lot of talk, of course, about the ticket allocation, uh -huh. uh, how many tickets will actually end up with, uh, with Wimbledon supporters, but uh, certainly the predominant colour here this afternoon is red and white, isn't it? Well, I think it's ridiculous that, you know, Liverpool with an average gate of almost 40,000 and Wimbledon's with their average gate of about eight, should get the same allocation of tickets. I mean, it doesn't make sense. And when those two teams won the semi-finals, Football Association should have said, right, OK, Liverpool, what is yours? Bump, there's 40. Wimbledon, we'll give you a little bit extra, maybe 15,000. You know, and do it that way. But because, it, as you can see around here, the Liverpool fans have bought the tickets up from all around the country. I would think... But it's going to cost them a lot of money, which I think is wrong. You know, they've been paying through the nose to get here. Now, the, the Wimbledon team uh, are just walking out now. They've arrived. They've been allowed to uh, experience this marvellous Wembley atmosphere for the first time. Little Terry Gibson there, Ian. Uh, yeah. I wonder what they're going to be making of it now. Well, I mean, they're so cocky and confident. And as I say, this team spirit they've got, they'll be on there, they're loving it. Look at them, loving it. It's terrific for them. I mean, what happens when the, when the kick-off is another matter? Because, as you know, you can never tell how the, how the game will pan out once the ball starts rolling. And, uh, yes, oh, they're their old boss there, Dave. I'm going to Dave Bassett, of course, who will be joining you in the in the commentary box yes. with Brian Moore. Oh, KD's arrived. There he is. All the accolades that have come his way in over the past three years, fully justified. Fully it? justified, yeah. And there's another two Scotsmen there, fellow Scots, great players. Steve McMahon, who's had a marvellous season in midfield, I would think will be a key player in Germany for England. I wonder what he's thinking about his uh, up-and-coming clash with young Mr. Jones. Well, I'm sure they've given it thought. I was saying earlier in, in our programme that I think Kenny Dalglish will have said, now look, be like Alan Hansen if you like, be cool. You know, Big Alan never gets involved in anything and, and I think they'll have said to McMahon, look, don't be riled because they'll try to get at you early on. And, uh, and Steve, is, as you well know, has got a short fuse and he bites a little bit. So I would say that, that, that Steve McMahon has got a key player today. He mustn't get involved. If he plays his game, then he will have a big part to play, you know, in, in the Liverpool side. Wembley is looking fine today, Ian, isn't it? It's in glorious it condition. I mean, we've had lovely weather in the past month, and the grass is, is looking as well as I've ever seen it. It's getting back to the old days, you know, when it used to be like a bowling game. Of course, that's Mike Hooper, Liverpool's yes. reserve team goalkeeper, who played four times this season and didn't concede never, a goal. Never <laughs> lost a goal, not a bad record, eh? There we are. Of I mean, there's a lot of players there who would love to be playing. Liverpool have got a big squad, and there'll be some left out today who, you know, would be a bit upset and sad at not playing. Well, we'll be talking to the, the players down there on the pitch uh, very shortly, but for now, a little break.
No, it's so hot down here. It's been hot here a few times, I think. I think most of the times we've played here, it's been like this. Uh, I think we played Arsenal once in the Charity Shield, it was as hot as this. Uh, it's certainly be, be played in, isn't it? I mean, it's a beautiful surface, a little bit hot. Just wait and see what happens. It might be very hot for Wimbledon, judging by the number of people in the stadium wearing red. Well, there's plenty, uh, plenty of favours on our side, but as long as the favours are on the pitch on your side, that would be the most important thing. Now, all year, when I've been covering Liverpool matches, at around 2 o'clock, I've been sent in to ask you if you can tell me the team. It's 2 o'clock now. Can you tell me the team for the cup final? That's a fair programme. Uh, this means now just Blackman, and Gary Gillespie both play. Craig Johnson and uh, Jan Mobisov, which is a disappointment for lads that have made a contribution throughout the whole season, but only allowed 13, so that's what I've got to do. Made a decision and got to stand the fall by it. With the two lads with the stitches in their foreheads, was it a very big decision to include them? Well, particularly not. And a word on Craig Johnston, who's obviously had his say about quitting the game, but you've included him in your 13. Well, he's got to go, isn't it? <laughs> if he does go. If, it's an if still. There well, must be a doubt about everything, isn't it? I'm sure you'll be trying to keep him here. Thanks very much for telling us that, Ken. And Thank all the you. very best. Thank you. Dave, Dave Bassett, how do you feel the heat is going to affect your old team, Wimbledon? Well, they look quite relaxed at the moment. Uh, I think it'd be OK. The last half hour might be important, but if they cope well in that first hour, I think they'll be OK. I know you're looking forward to greeting one or two old pals when they come back here. You had a look at their faces when they went out. Have you made any conclusions? Yeah, they look relaxed. They don't look too white. They look, look like they're enjoying the occasion. But the long ball stuff, the hit it and hope and chase it and battle, I mean, it's virtually impossible to play it in this heat, surely. Well, they're going to do it and they're going to show us how it's done. OK, we look forward to talking to you a little bit later on. Let's go back to Martin, who's got Steve McMahon with him. Steve, Steve McMahon against Vinnie Jones. That really whets the appetite. Well, let's hope uh, that we can do everyone justice, and I think everyone's looking forward to the confrontation, none more so than myself. But um, let's hope that it turns out to be a good game, not just between me and Vinnie Jones, but between both Wimbledon and Liverpool. Do you just have to remind yourself going into a potentially explosive clash that it is a big stage and you've got to be on your best behaviour as well? Well, that's part of football. It's part of growing up. You've got to learn, and you've got to learn quickly, because if you don't, then you wouldn't be in the game. So uh, I've learned over the last few years. Uh, you're learning every day, so uh, I don't think it'll make much difference today. We've just got to go, go out and try and play football. Penny Dalglish has just told us the team, and you're in it, which wasn't the case two years ago when you were sub. That's right. Um, it was a catalogue of uh, injuries and, and certain things, but uh, I was sure relieved when he named the team anyway, so I can go out and try and give a good display. Hope you have a good day, Steve. Let's go back to Jim. Thank you. Peter Beersley, first cup final. What do you make of it? Obviously, it's very exciting. Uh, I've never experienced anything like this before. You know, the Wimbledon fans at the other end, and obviously our fans down here, and it's a great occasion. Listen, we used to chat uh, once or twice on pitch side in Mexico. A bit of Mexican conditions here today. Yeah, it's a bit warm. Uh, hopefully, me and Barnsley will be used to it from Mexico, but uh, it's going to be hot, but hopefully we'll enjoy it. What about the, the difference that the fans make? I mean, it's almost four, five to one Liverpool fans here compared to Wimbledon, I would think. Yeah, that's right. Coming down Wembley Way, it was like spot the Wimbledon fan. That's not being disrespectful. Right. I think they must have got here early and got in the ground. But, uh, you know, we have got a lot of fans, but at the end of the day, it won't affect Wimbledon. Now, I read somewhere you're going to keep the old Hampstead Heath in today. You're not going yeah, to take them out. Is that right? Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, I can't take them out anymore. Nobody knows that, but I can't take them out anymore. And... Uh, it's just one of them things that obviously it makes me look a little bit better, but not too good. Thank you, Peter. We'll go back to Martin now. Cheers, sir. Gary Ablett. I've just heard from the manager you're definitely playing, so I don't know whether that's the first you've heard. Yeah, well, it's first I heard about 10, 15 minutes ago, so I'm very pleased. Round off a memorable season, really, for me. You're a scouser through and through. How difficult it has been for the Ablett family to get enough tickets? Well, luckily enough, we got, we got quite a few each, so hopefully everyone's come down today, everyone's made a safe journey down and they'll be here cheering us on. There's a lot of experience around you in the Liverpool team. What sort of things have the older players been saying to you about taking part in an FA Cup fan? They haven't said anything, really. It's probably all get said in the dressing room in the next half hour, 45 minutes or so, but uh, I'm sure I'll come through it OK. You know, they, they've got the experience, they've been here before, so they'll, I'm sure they'll bring me along quite nicely. Thanks, Gary. Let's go to Jim, who's talking to Alan Cork. Alan Cork, uh, all very relaxed. It's not, uh, I'm not going to have to wake you up before this one, are you? No, it's a bit, uh, 
a bit nervous when he first came out, but now it looks uh, it's not so bad. As a fellow who's uh, been through the football mill, what does this uh, moment and this day mean to you? Oh, it's absolutely marvellous. I've just seen my parents on the side over there, and uh, they've all got dressed up in the Wimbledon gear, so it's, it's great, though. Do you think that any of the Wimbledon players are going to look around and say, goodness me, I don't think I'm going to be able to perform here? No, it's just, it's just going to be a great day for the lads. I hope everyone does well and we get, we get a decent result. I've got to ask you, I mean, you're well dressed uh, for the heat, with the old shades on there. What about playing in this? Well, I was going to wear them when I was playing, but if I said I couldn't do it, but uh, yeah, it's going to be the hottest day of the year, I think, and it's going to be fun. Right. I must just call in Dave Bassett here. Dave, uh, I mean... Hello, Colin. Hello, Colin. Hello, son. Nice to, see the, nice to see the boy here, sort of uh, looking very relaxed. Yeah, well, here's his laid back. He'll enjoy it. Yeah, I'm sure he will. OK, OK, might Dave. Score a goal at corner. Yeah, might do. Might do. <laughs> well, he did last time, so he can do it again, can't he? I hope so. Let's go back to El. Yeah, so I'm looking for a corner and a free kick, and I'll nick a goal today. <laughs> Alan Cork, the most experienced of the, the Wimbledon players. All the others, by the way, are at the, at the other side of the ground, uh, waving and, and talking to supporters. It's not because we didn't want to interview them all. We'll, we'll get to them. We'll get to them. Right, now we've been looking forward to this for, uh, for a while, I can tell you. Our very special Cup Final Day feature, Jimmy Greaves meets Mike Tyson. Intrepid, fearless, that's Greavesy. On the